Welcome to all of you who are listening to Kanguka this morning. My name is Chris Dikumana. I'm the host of this broadcast. Today is Wednesday and you know that on Wednesdays, I usually talk about preparing our day. I keep showing you that there is no better way to prepare your day other than preparing it through prayer. If you're a regular listener of Kanguka, you can't start your day without praying. If you've been listening to the broadcast for months and you still leave your home without praying, it means that the words you hear in this broadcasts aren't creating life into you. Let me tell you that the words I share with you in this broadcast are words of life. Many listeners have already told us that their lives were transformed. If you wake up in the morning and you start your day without praying, without meditating on the word of God, it means that you still don't understand what kind of world you live in. We need to understand that there is power in heaven, but that power is only accessible through faith and most of all through prayer. So preparing your day means that you place it in God's hands so he can have full control over your entire day. You let him take the lead and you follow his lead. This morning, I want you to meditate on Matthew chapter 22 verse 36 to 40. In this passage, Jesus is responding to people who ask him which is the greatest commandment. In verse 37, Jesus said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. But he didn't stop there. He also said that there is a second commandment that's similar to the first one. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And he concluded by saying that the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. You need to love God with all your heart. Every morning you need to make God your first priority. When you're preparing your day, you need to give God the first place in everything that you're going to do. I don't know what your plans are. Maybe you will go to work, or you will go to school, or you will remain at home. In whatever plans you have, God has to come first. You need to love Him with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. But we often fail to do it because we have other priorities that are more important to us than I am. In order to be able to give God the first place in your life, you need to prepare yourself in the morning before you leave your home. But you can't do it on your own. It's only the Holy Spirit who can enable you to do that. So if you're still home this morning, I urge you to ask the Holy Spirit to empower you so you can be able to put God first in everything. Once you start your day, it's very easy to lose focus on God. It's easy to just focus on other things. But let me tell you that you need to understand that I am has to be your top priority. He has to come first. You may have some other activities you need to do and that's fine. It's good to work. It's good to take care of other people. But you need to make sure that I am has the first place. We saw that the second commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. Many of us are selfish by nature. We always care more about our own interests or the interests of our close family members. We don't care for others in the same way that we care for ourselves. But the word of God is telling you to love your neighbor as yourself. It means that if you see someone in need and you're able to help, then you shouldn't ask yourself, what's in need for me? What do I gain by helping? When you think like that, it means that you don't have the love of Christ. That's why I keep urging the listeners of Kanguka to help others. When you prepare your day, I want you to start asking yourself, who can I bless today? Please know that blessing someone isn't limited only to giving money. Yes, it's good to give money to someone in need, but if there is any other way you can help a brother or a sister in Christ who's not related to you, then you should just do it. There should be at least one child of God somewhere who's benefiting from your help. Praying for others is also a good thing. It's good to pray for other people who are going through hard times. You may not have money to give them, but you can pray for them and that's very important. But if you're able to help, you need to do it with the love of Christ. We often fail to help because we don't prepare ourselves for it in the morning. But if you make it part of your morning preparation and you say, God help me, Holy Spirit show me the person I should bless today, then the Holy Spirit will speak to your heart. But you need to make those preparations early in the morning before you leave your home. We 
It's now time to continue our study of the book of Judges. We started this study on Monday and I had asked you to read the first two chapters. We saw in the first chapter that the children of Israel prayed to God and they asked him who should go first to fight against the Canaanites. In verse 2, God told them, Judah should go up. Indeed, I have delivered the land into his hand. I told you yesterday that the name of Judah means praise. I don't know what you're facing right now. Maybe you're struggling in your marriage or you have some health issues. But no matter what you're going through, no matter what burdens you have, no matter how bad your situation may look, you need to kneel down and lift up praise to God. The word of God says in Psalm chapter 22 verse 3 that the Lord is enthroned in the praises of Israel. It means that praises are a throne where God can sit. I often teach about this because I've experienced the power power of praise in my own life. I've seen praise open doors for me. I've seen the impossible become possible because of praise. I've seen obstacles removed. I've seen God made a way for me thanks to the power of praise. Praise is a powerful weapon when it's not mixed with complaining. Satan can't stop the power of praise. He can stop many other things, but he can't stop the power of praise. That's because when you offer praise, God himself comes down and he sits in the midst of your praises. This is very powerful. Praise the Lord. But you need to know that you can't mix praise with anything else. Many people often make the mistake of mixing their praises with other things that God doesn't want. In this story, God clearly said that Judah should go up. He didn't mention any other tribe. He only mentioned Judah, which means praise. But in verse 3, we see that once Judah knew that he was chosen to go, he made a mistake because he asked Simeon to join him in the fight against the Canaanites. Simeon agreed and they went together. So the tribe of Simeon and the tribe of Judah went together to fight. But Judah made a mistake by asking Simeon to help because God never mentioned Simeon. God only mentioned Judah. We need to understand that we should always follow God's instruction exactly the way he wants it. If he's asking you to praise, then just praise and don't mix your praise with anything else. Many people offer praises to God, but at the same time, they continue to complain. You praise and give thanks to God, but then you start complaining. You say that you're not blessed and you question God, how come things aren't going well for me? Why is it taking too long? Whenever you say those words, you mix Judah with something else. If you continue reading the story, you will see that God gave Judah victories. In the next few verses, you can see that they had several victories. In verse 4, we see that they killed 10,000 Canaanites. Judah didn't achieve victory because of his own strength, but because the hand of Ayam was upon him and he delivered the Canaanites into their hand. If you continue to read, you will see all the victories they achieved. At this time, Judah and Simeon were fighting together. You can see in verse 17 that they were still together in the fight against the Canaanites. In verse 18, we see that Judah took Gaza, he took Ashkelon, he took Ekron. He achieved all these victories because God was with him. Please read carefully verse 19. It says that the Lord was with Judah. Hallelujah. I hope that you're getting this. It doesn't say that the Lord was with Judah and Simeon. No. Judah and Simeon were fighting together, but the word of God says that the Lord was with Judah. Why doesn't it mention Simeon too? You have to remember that God didn't ask Simeon to go fight. It's Judah who asked Simeon to come with him. So verse 19 says that the Lord was with Judah, and they drove out the people who lived in the mountains. But something happened in the last part of verse 19. It says that they couldn't drive out the people who lived in the valley because they had chariots of iron. I have a question for you. How come they were able to have victory against all the other Canaanites, but suddenly they failed against the people of the valley who had chariots of iron? Let me tell you that it has nothing to do with those chariots. Judah failed because he didn't follow God's instruction to the letter. He didn't do exactly what Ayam had asked him to do. Ayam only wanted Judah to go up and fight, so Simeon shouldn't have been there. Whenever you don't do exactly what God asks you to do, and you start adding your own things, you may have some victories, but sooner or later, you will get to a point where you fail. If you want to have a complete victory, you need to fully obey. You need to do exactly what Ayam said. 
God willing, we continue tomorrow. May I am bless you. Have a great day. If you want to repent or you transformed by these teachings, you can contact us by sharing your testimony in order to edify other listeners by contacting us on plus two five six seven eight one three seven seven three three seven.